Hello and welcome to another episode of Laptop Retrospective and today we are doing a little bit of basic investigation into uh, CPU-Z or CPU-Z. With regards to the Surface Book, many of you are asking for uh, specific details on the CPU and the caches and all that wonderful number stuff. So I thought I'd put it up here on the screen, do a quick benchmark, plenty of other videos out there that have done uh, much more comprehensive stuff than I have the tools and what I will be doing is going through uh, the various screens that you see here and at any moment you can of course pause the video uh, to examine these statistics for your benefit. Everything here is as you would expect to see. It is using DDR3 memory, not DDR4, but that is likely due to uh, memory uh, and wattage and all that wonderful stuff. So as you can see it detects both the 1050 and the UHD 620 which you know what for an integrated is not too shabby because you have to remember that's what's in the tablet component. Now for a benchmark I am going to compare it up against uh, an older CPU a 4790K and that's mainly because that's as close as this benchmark uh, utility has to my current desktop. My current desktop, as you can see, is not a spring chicken. But I am very curious to know how these U-style uh, energy efficient processors stack up. So let's go ahead and just do a basic bench. And what it would appear to be out of the gate is single core is, I'm going to call it comparable, and uh, multi core performance is just slightly under. And that's actually pretty good. Um, you now you might say, well, this is several generations newer, but it's also only pulling down 15 watts as opposed to my power hungry desktop setup. So this is actually pretty cool to see and maybe we'll give some credence to it. Let's uh, do a bit of a stress test, see if our results are similar. Okay, it looks like there might be a little bit of throttling going on there. I think we might have uh, capped the turbo boost. Uh, we're going to use the non-scientific method of reaching my hand in behind, and yep, that's pretty warm. Not scorching hot to the touch, but it's pretty clear that it's hit its kind of thermal limit. So for a quick bench, you don't see that for sure, uh, but when you are really pushing that CPU, it seems that the uh, multi-thread performance is holding pretty steady at... Well, it's around 1900 and dropping. So let's see if this levels out at any one point. Like the, the more it goes, obviously, the uh, worse the potential performance, depending on how much heat uh, dissipation uh, we have on that CPU. And again, it's getting fairly warm uh, back there. Okay, so our thermal throttling is definitely starting to slow down a little bit. It's not dropping uh, as quickly. So it's holding fairly steady around 1634.6. It's dropping very slowly at this point. Is there thermal throttling? Well, obviously there is. Um, I already mentioned that in another video. Is it really that bad? Well, it depends. If you're going to push it uh, to these extremes all the time, then you need a workstation, not a two-in-one. That would be the commentary I would provide with that. Okay, let's do a basic uh, bench CPU and also give it a moment to uh, recover from the heat. And see if we can notice any real difference. Pretty spot on with what they were before. So let's do another stress test and see if the results uh, decrease as quickly. So 
So we're at 100%. Speed is 3.35 gigahertz. And it's starting to show a little bit of fluctuation uh, over here. And now we're seeing it uh, over here dropping down, uh, but also trying to stay there as long as it possibly can. But eventually it will uh, start to peter out as the heat increases. You have to remember that the CPU in the tablet portion is being uh, cooled capacitively on the 13 inch i7. I believe the only fan is actually located in the base of the unit for the GPU. So as that time goes on, as you can see, uh, that number has dropped almost uh, one entire gigahertz in terms of its speed. So that would be turbo boosting kind of having its day and having to retire, if you will. But that being said, it seems like it's trying to hold pretty steady at 2.2, give or take, uh, despite the pretty intense amount of heat uh, that we're producing without anywhere for it to go. Okay, folks, I think we're going to pretty much uh, close it off here for today. Again, this really won't be anything that you haven't seen before. There are many benchmark videos out there on this particular unit, but it was requested, and this tool, uh, CPU-Z, was uh, specifically asked to be used. So you've got the data. You can see that I can confirm what everyone else on the internet has probably already said. This one throttles. Uh, so will the uh, 15 inch as well. Takes a little longer because it's got that fan to help the, the cooling cycle. But ultimately, if you are concerned about thermal throttling, eh, this would be something to be aware of, but you need to push that thing either quite hard or artificially so. And that's really not what the Surface Book 2's target audience is. It's not the super high-end workstation need to render these 3D things yesterday. Uh, there are better choices out there, certainly for that. This is kind of a what I like to think of as a multi-role fighter jet. It's supposed to be a fighter, it's supposed to be a bomber, it's supposed to be a reconnaissance plane, and it does all three fairly well, but it's not an expert in any one of those areas. And that comparison I might actually save for a future video. If you enjoyed this sort of content, I would highly encourage you to hit that subscribe button down there, and I've also been told to uh, encourage you to hit that notification bell, so when new videos are released, you can be the first to see them and to comment on, on them, and let me know uh, in what direction or what tests you'd like to see me do next, and I will see you later.